Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 34. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 3, Section 3.5, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the increase decrease problem sheet, and we're going to do the problem at the top of this sheet. Let's go ahead and read it. This is going to be a decrease problem, and we're going to see a, a new handy formula. And we'll derive this formula from the picture we draw. All right, after spending $3,450 for tuition and $4,350 for dorm fees, Edgar finds that 35% of his original savings remains. Find the amount of his savings that remain. All right, I have no idea how to solve this, but let's just start at the beginning for our word problem and list the things we can find. After spending that amount for tuition, so I'm going to put, um, and it looks like there's a bunch of parts. We've seen uh, in earlier videos where we had sometimes more than one part. So I'm going to say part one. Now it's been on tuition. And then I'm going to put uh, 3450. Maybe add some formatting, some currency or something. All right, uh, part two. I'm going to change that to a two. I'm using autocomplete. And I'm going to say amount spent on, oh, dorm fees. Four, three, five, zero. And add some uh, number formatting like currency. All right, so the rest of it, uh, Edgar finds that 35% of his original savings remain. All right, so we have a rate here, right? finds that 35% of his original savings. So there's some rate of his multiply original savings. That must be the base, right? I'm going to start with this rate. And I'm going to say uh, that's the percent of uh, savings that remain. And that's 35%. That is the rate. Notice because the rate, we can tell it's a rate because it doesn't say increase or decrease or mark down or mark up. But that rate is less than 1, so we know it's a decrease problem. All right, that would mean if the rate to get to the remaining, the savings remaining, the end will equal remaining. And that also means that the begin value equals original savings. OK, and we don't know uh, the end amount. We have no idea what that is. We don't know what the original amount is. OK, so do we get what original savings remain. That's the uh, begin amount. Find the amount of his savings that remain. So the goal All right, now we don't, we're not given a lot of information here. We're going to really going to have to back into some things. I think drawing a picture will help a lot here. So I'm going to draw a picture. There's, a, there's always the amount, a big part, a, some, some other part, right? I don't think I should make, I don't know, I really, oh, so no, this, if it's down to 35, that means the, the remaining part's got to be smaller than the amount we spent. So I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. Maybe do this one again. So I'm going to use a lighter color here. I'm actually going to copy this and repeat it right here. All right. So we have. A big part for the dollars and then two parts that make it up. A big part for the percentages and rates. A big part and two parts make it up. OK, so what do we have here? Well, OK, let's start. Um, we know that the end amount, we, and we don't know what it is, but we know that we went down. right? So the end amount is going to be uh, smaller. The amount of change, that's when we add this. And we'll do that in just a second. We can even say, um, I hit Enter Spent. 
that we can put here. Uh, So that makes this what? Oh, yeah, this is a decrease problem. So the begin amount is going to be the biggest one. This is uh, right. So do we know any of these? Well, not yet. We'll, but we'll do that. OK, over here, the big part, that's going to be what we call the base rate. Right, because we started with some amount. We went down, so that means that's 100%. That's useful. They don't tell us that in the problem. That's something we have to know, right? But that, that if we didn't know that, we wouldn't have enough information here at all. All right, the rate of change. We don't know that. And we can back into that one, though. But we do know the rate. And it is 35%. All right, uh, so we have a little picture. Let's just see. Let's calculate this first little bit and see if that will help us. I'm simply going to go like this and then get these numbers. And how about total spent or something like that? And then we can simply add those up. I'm going to do Alt equals. Now, the I'm going to come down here and say uh, amount of change. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm going to show this as a negative. Now watch this. We could go equals negative this and enter it, right? Let me, and then there's formatting, but we'll deal with that in just a second. Let me just show you something. I'm going to delete that. If you're in Excel and you type a plus or an equal sign, or a minus sign. All of those start formulas. You may have noticed uh, in class if you ever try to do a plus and then like do something, oh, it's it thinks it's in formula mode, and that's because it is in formula mode. So in this case, we actually, if you want the opposite of something, just type a minus like that. Notice when you come back up here and look in the formula bar, put it in edit mode, it actually is polite to put the equal sign is in. Now that's formatting. I don't want that. I'm going to come up and look up here. Look at that. Currency, it got a currency apply because that that's what was here. The default for currency is this parentheses, which comes from accounting. So I'm going to simply kind of come up here and look. They give us another option. It's got a little dash. I want that one. All right. Oh, so now we can come over here and we have an amount. All right. OK, so the next thing we can calculate, no problem, is because we have two pieces here, we can calculate our rate of change. And our formula for rate of change, we have a bunch of them. But this is a situation where we're given these two informations. We know we want this one. And by the way, if you, you know, you're know you doing these problems, you're getting stuck, here's our little guide we looked at a couple of videos ago. We created this. This is all. So here's rate of change. These are all the possibilities. And it looks like that's the one we want, rate minus 1. So I'm going to come over here and type rate minus 1. We're given the rate. So I simply go, actually, why don't we do this? I want to explicitly list rate down here. So I'm going to highlight this, use my move cursor. Boop. That's fine. I'm in, Oh, actually, let's do this equals rate equals this. That way I can explicitly show it there. And now I simply do, oh, rate. Wait a second. If we take 35%, the number under there is 0.35. If we subtract 1, 1 is bigger. That's exactly what we want here, because the rate of change comes out negative, because it's a decrease problem. All right, so now we can come up here. And now here's. Uh, a new formula we're going to use. Now, we've calculated begin before, and our begin formula was always end divided by rate. So I'm going to actually do a little boop, boop like this and add some black here. This is the type of formula we use. And actually, I'm going to add some white font. And I'm going to type this. This is, we use begin equals end divided by rate. Now, 
when we draw these pictures here, we always kept the proportions might not be exactly right, but as long as this piece was the same size as this, then the visual meaning of the chart is true, all right? End divided by the associated rate over here gives us begin. We'll check this out. The same logic of the sum amount times some percentage over here. Amount of change divided by rate of change, if you have those two, will give us the same exact begin. So I'm going to do a different little thing down here, like this, maybe in yellow. And I'm going to do begin equals, oh, amount of change divided by rate of change. All right, and we'll do that. Now look over here. When we did these formulas, uh, in the couple of videos ago, I did 12 of them. I had this one in here, so there's technically 13 over of them. So this, this chart is complete there, and there it is. For begin, you can do that one. Let's test it. I hope it works. All right, so begin, and we already have the begin amount up here. Tab. All right, ready? Equals, oh, we have our amount of change, boom divided by our rate of change. And there we have it. And it comes out positive because a negative divided by a negative is positive, just like a negative times a negative is positive. And if that's kind of confusing, in English it's the same too. A double negative is a positive. Now we can uh, complete or add something to our picture over here. Original amount is that. Now we have two pieces here, so we can certainly get end. And that is our goal here, to calculate the end, the savings that remain. So I'm simply going to take this, and I'm going to add this negative, right? There it is, 4,200. That's the amount remaining. Now I'm going to check this. I didn't leave myself enough room here. Check. And we could check all sorts of different ways here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try and check begin. Because this is true. We did that. But let's check this one. So here, I'm going to check equals, well, we need the end. We got the end divided by our rate. There's our rate of 35%. So the idea is this divided by this. Oh, we got it. So we checked it that way. We could uh, check some other things also, um, but that's looking good. Actually, let me finish this picture so the picture is complete. The savings that remain, boom. All right, now we answer our question. So the savings that remain are 4,200. All right, uh, a lot of fun this chapter. This is chapter three. We did uh, called percentages, and we did a lot. We talked a lot about percentages. We solved for rate. We solved for base. We solved for part. And then in section 3.5, we went in great detail about increase, decrease, and rate of change problems. All right, see you next chapter. See you next video.